for millennia mankind has pondered on what becomes of the human soul after death. Out of this grew the idea of an underworld, a dark realm where pain and suffering was guaranteed for those who had sinned during terrestrial life. Since this world was made for the dead, hell was not considered accessible by the living, and was instead a place that could only be discovered by the spirit. However, there are some locations on Earth which are regarded as entranceways to this other world. Gates to Hell. Whilst a drainage tunnel may not immediately inspire diabolical imagery of hellfire and infernal torment, there is one such tunnel system in the city of Clifton, New Jersey, that has a reputation for just that. Off Clifton's Paulison Avenue, located behind the old Black Prince Distillery Building, lies a storm drain that is known as the Gates of Hell. Over the years, this drainage system has earned a reputation for inexplicable, possibly paranormal happenings, including strange sounds and ethereal figures running at abnormal speeds. Not only that, it is rumoured that dark rituals have been performed in the tunnels. It is for these reasons that the Gates of Hell drain has attracted the attention of both locals and visiting paranormal investigators. Before one can even get close to the supposed entrance to Satan's lair, one must identify the correct way in. As there are many openings into what has been described as a maze of drainage tunnels, it is easy to get lost. Found in a wooded area down the hill from a railroad line, it is the dry, square-shaped entrance that supposedly marks the start of the Gates of Hell. From this eerie primary passageway, it is said that one can access a network of underground tunnels and storm sewers, including a secret room. It is this secret room which local legend largely focuses on. According to someone who grew up in Clifton, local people would often tell stories of people entering these tunnels and never returning, most in pursuit of the secret room. Said to be many layers under the ground, this hidden location is described as being the penultimate room before entering Hell itself. Only those with the supernatural ability to lift the axes that weighed thousands of pounds which blocked the door would be able to enter. Before that point, however, legend dictates that one must pass through hundreds of feet of underground tunnels, allegedly layered seven times, just like the circles of Hell. These inner tunnels, it is said, are littered with the remains of ritual offerings, bones, decaying carcasses, crosses, and occult graffiti. According to one personal testimony, a summer's day exploration of the drain with a friend ended in them fleeing from the tunnels after they heard a strange knocking sound, and possibly someone whispering some chant deeper in the tunnels. Another testimony describes having seen rocks being hurled out of the tunnel with no person visible inside. On another occasion, they also claim to have witnessed a small, human-shaped figure run out of the tunnel towards Weasel Brook Park with superhuman speed. Regardless of the presence of Satan, those who have visited the tunnel point out that inside can be an extremely dangerous place. Not only are the tunnels dark, but their very nature as a storm drain can mean that a seemingly dry tunnel can fill suddenly with water from the Weasel Brook stream that they provide runoff drainage for. As such, a visit to Clifton's Gates of Hell may very well endanger your life in several ways. In Greek mythology, the souls of the departed travel to the underworld after death. Sometimes called Hades in reference to its patron god, the underworld is described as a dark, sunless region, located either beneath the greatest depths of the earth or at the outer bounds of the ocean. In order to access the underworld, one must cross the Styx, Hades' most prominent river. The ferryman is the one to take the souls which enter the underworld across the river in exchange for a coin. 
those souls who have not received a proper burial and are therefore unable to pay the ferryman are left behind. The Christian equivalent of Hades can be said to be hell, for both are regarded as the dark counterpart to the bright and holy kingdom of the gods. And, just like hell, there have been living souls, not just the dead, who have gone searching for the entrance to the underworld. Someone who may have succeeded in locating an entrance to the underworld is Robert Paget. In the early 1960s, Robert Paget, a British doctor working at a nearby NATO airbase, lived in the ancient Roman town of Bayer. Paget was an amateur archaeologist who excavated in his spare time. It was the enigmatic Cave of the Sibyl, described by Virgil and other classical authors, which intrigued Paget the most. The cave, according to mythology, was inhabited by a prophetess who made an unfortunate deal with the god Apollo. As a young woman, she had promised her most precious gift to Apollo in exchange for as many years of life as there are particles in a pile of dust. However, as she struck the deal, she made the mistake of not clarifying that those years should come with ageless youth as well. As such, the Sibyl, a Greek term for a prophetess, aged but could not die. For years afterwards, she remained in her cave, a cave which as well as providing her with a place to divine the future, supposedly concealed an entrance to the underworld. Robert Paget was one of few people who believed that the cave was a real location, and did indeed contain a gateway to Hades. It had long been said that the Phlegrian Fields, located on the north shore of the Bay of Naples, close to where Paget lived, were where the Sibyl's cave could be found. The fields certainly have a hellish atmosphere, being situated on top of a collapsed magma chamber of an active volcano. The land is barren and hot, with fire and sulfurous gases leaking from the ground. It was near to here, where the fields vanish beneath the sea, that Paget and a small team of volunteers over the course of a decade excavated what turned out to be an incredible tunnel system. Almost immediately, it was obvious to Paget that the tunnels must have had some sort of ceremonial use. Their design was unnecessarily complex for a solely practical purpose. Notches for oil lamps occurred every yard in the tunnel's lower levels, far more frequently than would have been required merely to provide illumination. The orientation of the mysterious passageway which marked the entrance to the tunnel system also matched that of the midsummer solstice. Mysteriously, in the deepest and darkest part of the tunnel system, an underground stream, heated almost to boiling point in places, was discovered. With a sulfurous cloud hanging over its hot waters, the stream was reminiscent of classical descriptions of the river Styx. Continuing across the stream, through the heavy and reeking sulfurous air, Paget and his team found a steep ascending passage which opened into an antechamber. This room was described as a hidden sanctum by Paget. From there, further passageways with hidden staircases led off. Throughout the entire system, passageways had been blocked with rubble and rocks, making it difficult to appreciate fully the extent of the tunnels. All in all, the tunnels at Bayer were found to be immensely complex, with questions as to their purpose and full scope still unanswered. What was the hot, sulfurous stream discovered by Paget under the ground? And why were there tunnels leading to and from it? Had he, as he claimed, discovered the Sibyl's entrance to the underworld? Around the year 400 BC, the ancient Central American city of Teotihuacan was founded. At its height, it was thought that over 200,000 people lived within its boundaries. Yet, by 750 AD, the city had mysteriously collapsed. It became a ghost town. 
The reason why Teotihuacan was abandoned has long been debated. After all, the structures the city's people left behind are without a doubt magnificent. In particular, there is the Pyramid of the Moon, which is one of the oldest structures in the city. Located at the end of the Avenue of the Dead, it is connected to the avenue by a large staircase which leads up to a stage. Upon that platform, lives would have been offered to the great goddess of the city. She was the deity who governed water, fertility, the earth, and even creation itself. The offerings were so numerous that the pyramid's foundation is congested with bones. It is beneath this macabre layer that an enigma can be found. In early 2017, researchers found a subterranean tunnel that leads to a chamber under the pyramid. It is believed that the tunnel was built to represent a descent into the underworld, with some even suggesting that the chamber itself may be a gateway into that realm. This mysterious discovery is still in its infancy, as no one has yet broken ground to examine what lies beneath the chamber. The structure has, however, been mapped using electrical tomography. Once researchers begin excavating the site, it is thought that there may be even more mysteries in this underworld. Currently, very little is known about the Mesoamerican people who built this pyramid and founded the city. It is thought that since this area is largely untouched, further research and excavation may reveal their secrets in the years to come. However, one cannot help but wonder if there was a sinister reason for this underworld having been sealed up, and the entire city abandoned. Iceland is notorious for its volcanoes. With its high concentration of active volcanoes, the island has suffered numerous devastating volcanic eruptions since it was first settled by humans in 874 AD. In 2010, one eruption caused weeks of chaos and economic turmoil after its volcanic ash cloud grounded planes across Europe, affecting approximately 10 million travelers worldwide. However, comparative to other historic events, this eruption was minor. In fact, some of the volcanoes of Iceland are described as having been so disastrous that the gateway to hell itself is rumoured to be located there. Hekla Volcano has erupted at least 20 times since 874, making it one of Iceland's most active volcanoes. It was in 1104 that Hekla had its largest eruption. After having been dormant for over 250 years, the volcano detonated without warning, covering over half of Iceland with debris. Farms as far away as 40 miles were utterly abandoned because of the damage. Barely 50 years later, Hekla erupted again. Twice within living memory had Hekla caused explosive devastation. In the aftermath of these eruptions, rumours began to circulate across the whole of Europe that Hekla was in fact a gateway to hell. Fiery pits of lava had long been associated with the Christian idea of hell, and so it made sense to many that Hekla's infamous fiery pit was connected with this Christian concept. One text in which Hecla is supposedly referenced is The Voyage of St. Brendan the Abbot, thought to have been written around 1120. It describes the famous journeys of the Irish monastic saint Brendan, who was renowned for his legendary voyage to the Isle of the Blessed. Although Hecla is not mentioned by name, in chapter 34 the author of the text describes an island alight and covered in smoke. Watching from a distance in a boat, St. Brendan and his companions supposedly witnessed several thousand demons and heard the cries of the damned. The air was filled with a nauseating stench. St. Brendan had supposedly seen the place where the souls of the damned were received. In the next chapter, the text continues to describe how, the next day, the boat came closer. Now they saw a mountain covered with smoke. 
When their boat was pushed close to the shore by the wind, St. Brendan and his companions were surprised to find that the earth was entirely black. It was then that one of St. Brendan's monk companions fell overboard. None could find him, but they did hear the monk cry out that he was being torn from them by his sins. What followed were 100 devils, who made the monk scream and cry more. It was to the smoke-covered mountain that he went. As the smoke began to clear, St. Brendan and his remaining companions supposedly saw the gates of hell, out from which spewed flame, fire and sulphur. The monk was consumed. As this text was written just a few years after Hecla's devastating eruption in 1104, many have suggested that Hecla, a volcano with a long history of terrible eruptions, is the hellish island mountain that St. Brendan witnessed years earlier. The writings of the Cistercian monk Herbert of Clairvaux helped to strengthen further the association between Hecla and the Gateway to Hell. In his 1180 text, the monk suggested that the renowned fiery cauldron of Sicily, which men call Hell's Chimney, is affirmed to be like a small furnace compared to this enormous inferno. The fiery cauldron of Sicily is undoubtedly the infamous Mount Etna, the world's most active stratovolcano. Herbert of Clairvaux indicated that despite its reputation for being Hell's Chimney, another was truly deserving of this reputation and makes Etna look like a small furnace in comparison to its enormous inferno. Whilst the monk did not explicitly name Hecla, many have theorized that this was the volcano he meant. After all, tales of the volcano's fiery nature were predominantly spread across the continent by Cistercian monks. Two centuries later, when Hecla erupted yet again in 1341, a medieval Icelandic manuscript supposedly recorded that people saw large and small birds flying in the mountain's fire, which were taken to be the souls of the dead. For centuries, the association between Hecla and the Gateway to Hell continued. In the 16th century, a German scholar supposedly wrote that the Gates of Hell can be found in the bottomless abyss of Hecla Fell. Even into present times, local folklore tells of how witches gather around Hecla's peak each Easter in order to meet with the devil. Regardless of its supposed infernal connection, today the volcano continues to have an infamous reputation because of the destruction it has caused. Iceland's leading travel company has stressed that visitors wishing to hike Hecla must do so at their own risk as this alleged gate to hell may erupt without warning at any moment. During the 5th century AD, Ireland was visited by a man who would change their world forever, Saint Patrick. For many, his work in converting Ireland to Christianity is an accomplishment that puts him among Jesus' own apostles. Patrick's task was excruciating at times, leading him to doubt whether he could accomplish his mission in life. Thus, he would often turn to prayer for guidance. According to legend, God listened and answered his prayers. Jesus supposedly appeared to Patrick and showed him a cave in the ground on Station Island, a small island located in a lake in Ireland. Jesus is said to have told St. Patrick that this was a pit into purgatory, an intermediary realm where the dead may do penance for their sins in order to find redemption. From purgatory, hell could be experienced. Jesus explained to St. Patrick that by showing the Irish the torments of hell, they would desire the joys of paradise. Today, a monastery stands on the island. It is thought this dates back to the time of St. Patrick, having been built there to mark the island and its subterranean cave as a pilgrimage site. For centuries, pilgrims have travelled to Station Island to visit what is described as a gateway to the afterlife. Many of the pilgrims were faithful people seeking affirmation. Others were sinners that were brought to contemplate what awaited them in hell if they continued on their path. 
According to local custom, in order to enter St. Patrick's Purgatory, the pilgrim must first undergo a special ritual. It is a custom established by Patrick and his successors that no man may enter the purgatory unless he have license to do so from the bishop in whose diocese it is. When he shall have come to the bishop and indicated what his purpose is, the bishop shall first exhort him to desist from such an undertaking, saying that many have entered in and have never come out. If he perseveres, he receives letters from the bishop to the prior of the monastery. When the latter shall have read these, he shall dissuade the man from entering the purgatory, and shall diligently advise him to try some other penance, showing him the great danger that lies in it. If he persists, however, he brings him into the church, where he remains for fifteen days in fasting and prayer. At the end of this period, the prior summons the neighbouring clergy. The penitent is fortified with the Holy Communion and sprinkled with holy water, and is then led with procession and litany to the entrance of the purgatory. The prior shall then declare again to him the danger, and the fact that many have been lost in that ditch, opening the door for him in the presence of all. If he remains firm, the priests present bestow their benediction on him, and commending himself to their prayers, and marking himself on the forehead. In the minds of those who undertook this medieval pilgrimage, their journey was a serious one and was not undertaken lightly. For those who were brave enough to enter, there have been many accounts of what lies in the cave. Generally, it is described as a vision of hell. In the 14th century, one such pilgrim was a French knight of Beaujeu. It is said that inside the cave, he beheld the infernal torments. Part of this included meeting Bergebus, the porter of hell, who caused a wheel to make a hundred times a hundred thousand revolutions in the space of a single day, and on it there were fixed a hundred thousand souls. The French knight also supposedly saw the bridge which had to be crossed, and it was as sharp as a razor. He saw the souls in the fields of fire, and recognised some of them. He saw the gallows of hell. He saw the pit of hell. He saw the gulf of hell. Only after he had been forced to suffer witnessing all that hell contained was the knight able to return to the terrestrial paradise of earth. This testimony is not singular. In fact, it is one of the less detailed accounts of what is reported to occur to those shut into the pit for 24 hours. In the 12th century, a monk wrote a treatise about the island in which he detailed the testimony of another knight who supposedly faced hordes of demons who all tried to torture him. Only by remaining faithful was the knight able to survive. Today's Station Island continues to be a popular pilgrimage site, visited by many seeking to affirm their faith, or quite possibly to catch a glimpse of hell. Thank you for watching, and thank you to everyone who supported us last week when our channel was arbitrarily demonetized. Together, with our voices combined, we were able to make YouTube listen and are happy to announce that our channel is back to normal. Thank you. Also, an extra special thank you to everyone who supports us on Patreon. Finally, if you have enjoyed this video and cannot wait until my next one, why not check out the one suggested on screen now. Until next time.